everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kate. If you're new here and today I am going to be telling you about 10 books that I want to get to. Um, so I guess you could say it's kind of like a TBR video but I'm calling it more of like a wish list video because there are books on my like digital TBR but I don't own a copy of them and when I went through my digital TBR list on like Storygraph and Goodreads these are just 10 books that stood out to me for one reason or another and I don't know especially with like the holidays coming up and stuff I just thought it would be fun to I don't know just like start thinking about like what I want what I want to buy for other people um anyways the first book that I wanted to mention is called Heavy an American Memoir by Kiese Lehman I've heard a lot a lot of people on booktube talk about this um I heard it can be quite sad I heard a lot of people cry it hits a lot of people right in the little soul um it's written by a black man talking about his life weight identity art friendship and family um and yeah like I said I feel like I just I love a memoir and haven't heard like one single bad thing about it and so here we are I want to read it the second book that I'm mentioning is called Fraternity, and it's a collection of short stories by Benjamin Nugent, um, and these short stories center around young adults who are learning to be on their own for the first time, kind of talking about their drunken antics, romantic encounters, and just like all the like ins and outs of leaving home for the first time, being young enough to not really understand life, which I'm still there. Like, does anyone ever understand it? I don't know. But being young enough where you're, like, not afraid to, like, do certain things, but old enough to feel like you have it all under control when you really don't. Um, and I feel like I'm super interested in this age group in particular of, like, the coming of age, like, genre, because I feel like there's different sections, you know, like the early childhood to like teen years that's coming of age I would say this like the high school to like college age switch over and then like the college age to like more like adult life um kind of like switch over and I feel like since I just left the like college age chunk of life you know like I've been graduated for like two to three years now yeah I'm just like like I said I love that particular age group because I think it's fun to just like look back and reflect um especially on like your own life and kind of like what you remember feeling um but again like I feel like when you're looking back you kind of like I don't want to say make up new feelings but you like misremember and you remember what you want to remember um and that's just the way like memories work you know um which is kind of sad but it's like really interesting to me and like I don't know, that age group is just so fun. Just the, like, I'm old enough to know everything and make my own decisions and I'm so mature and adult and, like, I can, like, go do all these things now without anyone being there to tell me that I can't. But also, like, you are so young and you have no idea. You have no idea about, like, literally anything. I still don't, but I definitely know more than I did then. Um... And I just, like, love reading about that age group. Like, I don't know. It's just so, like, raw, I would say. Like, it's such a raw age, and I just, I love it. Anyways, the third book that I'm going to talk about today is called Conversations on Love by Natasha Lunn. Um, and, yeah, it's just essays about love. How do we find it? How do we sustain it? And how do we survive when we lose it? Um, I'm a whore for love. I love love. I want everyone to be in love. Find love. Whether it's friendship love, family love, romantic love. Like, I'm just, like, obsessed. It gets me right here every time. I don't know. I just, ugh, I just love it. And I'm very excited. Because, like, who doesn't want to read Conversations on Love, you know? Because I think this woman basically, like, goes around and she, like, interviews a bunch of people and, like, does a lot of, like, research I guess you could say on just like the topic of love and how people are feeling about it and whatever um and then writes a bunch of essays and like who wouldn't want to read that you know what I mean I'm very excited um the fourth book that I'm going to talk about today is called Tennis Lessons by Susanna Dickey um it's about a misfit girl just trying to make her way through life and finding little bits of happiness along the way um and I said like misfit girl because that's like what 
the little synopsis said but like who the heck even knows like what that means anymore um and if I'm being honest like who doesn't love reading about like a young girl just trying to like figure life out like I said like I love that age group like early 20s just trying to like figure it all out you know what I mean um and if I'm being honest I just like really 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 like the cover like a lot like it looks like an album cover to me I don't know I'm just like really into it um so there's that I'm sorry if I'm not giving you much detail on these books but I haven't read them so you know I know what you know basically um the fifth book on this list is called My Mess is a Bit of a Life by Georgia Pritchett I think is how you say her name um and it's a memoir by a woman living a life with anxiety and never knowing anything different so it sounds like this woman has always dealt with anxiety her whole life. She's always been a nervous Nelly, a worry wart. Um, and I can completely understand, relate, I'm on it with her. And, I mean, she's older than me and she's, like, done more with her life than I have. And so, like, if I'm being honest, I think stories like that just, like, really, like, I know it sounds so corny, but, like, inspire me or just, like, make me, like, feel like I can do it too. Especially when I'm at my most nervous points in life, I would say I'm like, oh, but, like, so-and-so can do this and I relate to them, so, like, I can too. It gives me confidence, like, moving forward and, like, who doesn't love a memoir? I'm pretty sure a lot of these are memoirs. So, I mean, yeah, I love a good essay collection, memoir, biography dealio autobiography I mean uh you know what I mean though um but yes I'm very excited for that um the sixth book is called easier ways to say I love you by Lucy Fry this is also a memoir on love and lust and attachment and how this woman turns a love triangle into an honest poly relationship I mean like I said I'm a whore for love I love love um and I think this is just interesting because you don't hear firsthand about a lot of poly relationships at least like I haven't and I don't um especially in like literature like I haven't seen a lot like written about poly relationships and I don't know I just think it's like interesting to like hear about love in a completely different context than what I've really like known or learned or experienced on my own um so yeah I don't know there you go um the seventh book is called Supper Club by Laura Williams um and this is about a secret society of hungry young women who meet up after dark and feast to reclaim their appetites and physical spaces it sounds like it's gonna be a group of like angry anxious angsty women just trying to like reclaim their lives don't know if that's true um but it seems like and if I'm being honest what really pulled me in at the very beginning of all this was again the cover I love the cover love the cover I do think it looks like another indie album cover, if I'm being honest. But, like, yeah, love the cover. And, like, doesn't that just sound so interesting? Like, something, like, I've never read before. Um, anyways, the eighth book is actually a book that I feel like I have been wanting to buy for, like, forever. And I don't know why I haven't. I don't know why I haven't. But I've been thinking about it for, like, the longest time. And it's called Expectation by Anna Hope. Um, it's about a group of best friends who grow apart as life goes on and they're all trying to figure out what it takes to lead a meaningful life. Um, again, I feel like it's a similar theme of just, like, young people trying to just, like, do life and be happy and, like, learn what that means for them. And I feel like learning the lesson of what makes me happy isn't going to be what makes you happy isn't going to be what makes you happy and that's okay. It's okay that what I want is not what you want. We can still be friends. We can still get along. We can still, like, be a part of each other's lives, even though our choices aren't the same. Okay, number nine is called Fuck, I Think I'm Dying by Claire Easton. Easton? I don't think I'm saying her last name right, but it's okay. Um, and it's a personal account of living with panic and how she deals with it. We love a girl who suffers panic attacks, you know what I mean? Like, thank you very much. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I'm being honest, I feel like I've met a lot of people in life who has suffered panic attacks, but I feel like a lot of times it's, uh, I've had one had two it's never been something that they've like dealt with for like a period of their life or like something that like 
has come, gone away, come back. And I feel like that's definitely more like my experience. And I think I just want to read about other people's experiences um, that's like similar to mine. And the 10th book um, is called Dope Sick by Beth Macy. Um, doctors and the drunk company that addicted America. I mean, who doesn't love a non- fiction it's not really true crime but like journalism breakthrough of the universe like especially when it has to do with um any sort of like societal issues social problems I love it um and I don't know I feel like I'm just like really interested in like science gone wrong recently which I don't know why I really don't know um like forever ago maybe like last year I watched the bad blood Elizabeth Holmes what's her company called the little mini lab girl the Edison wannabe Steve Jobs bitch who like was a big fraud big liar face about um she was like, oh my god, Theranos, there you go, that's what it's called, yeah, that shit blew my mind, and, like, this week, I saw a podcast called Bad Blood by the guy, the journalist, who wrote the big story in, like, the Wall Street Journal, I think, about it, he started a podcast, and I've been listening to it, even though I, like, know a lot of it, I feel like it's still, like, really just, like, blowing my mind, blowing my mind, because he's, like, the court cases, like, started, um, and so he, like, is talking about that, too, and it's just, like, super interesting, and I feel like, yeah, because I've been so, like, into that story, I feel like, oh my god, like, maybe I should read some more fucked up science, got science gone wrong, just, like, bullshit of the world, um, which I feel like, yeah, the whole opio opioid epidemic drug problem of America especially I feel like be super interesting and sad to read about um so yeah that's the last book I have to talk about today I'm sorry that a lot of these are like memoirs nonfiction. I didn't really realize that when I was making the list but that's just the way my brain works <laughs> so yeah um but yes please comment down below if you've read any of these if you're planning on reading any of them if they're worth a read um and just like what you're excited to pick up soon ish sort of <laughs> um but yeah I'll talk to you guys in the next video bye